Welcome to the third episode of Road to Google series. So in this video, since you guys had this confusion that computer science is a vast field, so there are so you can like be into app development, web development, competitive coding, machine learning, artificial intelligence, cyber security, बहुत सारे domains हैं ठीक है. So if you want to get placed in your dream company, let's say Google or Facebook or all these fine companies, what should be the thing that you should focus on? So what is more important? So is it competitive coding or open source contributions or डेवलपमेंट लाइक वेब डेवलपमेंट एप डेवलपमेंट तो क्या है एक ऐसी चीज सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल भैया इज दिस एनी वन थिंग व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट डू यू व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट सो आई पर्सनली फील दैट एवरीथिंग इज इंपॉर्टेंट लाइक यू कैन डू यू कैन गेट इन्वॉल्वड इनटू एनी पर्टिकुलर थिंग एंड लाइक डू समथिंग प्रीटी प्रीटी गुड इनटू दैट फील्ड एंड दैट वुड बी अ रियली गुड सीवी पॉइंट और रेज्यूमे पॉइंट इफ यू आर लुकिंग इट फ्रॉम दैट पर्सपेक्टिव I personally feel that you should not work towards something just because you want to enter into your CV or resume. Uh, if you are really interested in some particular field, let's say if you are really interested in blockchain, you are interested in app development, you are interested in web development, or you are interested in any particular niche computer science area, uh, like databases or some particular kind of database, something like that. It's really then it's really cool, right? You can work into that particular field for a long time and build a really cool project, and that will look really good on your CV. So. i would say pass, uh, follow your passion like whichever field you are really interested in uh-huh. that being said i would say that it's really important that you explore the breadth of computer science in your undergraduate uh like because when you are going to join a company you will most likely specialize into one particular field after a few years but to find that field you need to go through everything that is there in the market that is currently right now so yeah. i would recommend try out different things that are there in the that are there in computer science try machine learning try deep learning try development try open source like try competitive programming as well like competitive programming is not a field it's just a mind sport and it's really good to like train your mind to do uh, really interesting problems and everything uh, but yeah so that's what i feel and one really good advice in this is that code as much as you can so if you are like learning anything new try to code it and uh, like do any if you are just interested in anything just try to learn about it and start to code it and start to explore different things in it and that's what i feel so it's not that any particular thing is really important than the other it's that how much you put in effort into a particular thing that will make your cv and that will also improve you as an engineer so bhaiya uh, let's talk about open source so what what do you think about gsoc and all these open source contributions and like it might be a misconception but when i say that gsoc clearing gsoc gives you a re- very an extra edge while you are sitting for placements and something like that so is like what do you think about it set you apart from the others who kind of apply so i like what your thoughts about that yeah so yeah gsoc is a pretty big deal and like if you can do gsoc it's pretty good because you get exposure into a particular open source project and you can contribute to it uh, that being said i would not say gsoc is the like biggest thing in the world there are particular internships or particular projects that you can do which are like better than which will look better on your cv than gsoc so uh, don't think that if, so there is this mentality right you if you want to do a gsoc with a particular organization you work for that organization for 6 months 8 months before even the application begin and that's how you establish your rapport with the repository manager and all those things i would say you can you should only do that if you are interested in that particular uh, repository if you are at a, like really interested to that repository not just to do for the sake of gsoc uh, and like for, to give you an example why i am saying this is that there are some more, many students are really interested in let's say development of some particular operating system or some particular programming language but that programming language or operating system is not part of gsoc at all so that should not stop you from contributing into that particular repository uh there are some like uh, really interesting things in there in this is that if you work for a repository which is a big repository big project a lot then the contributors of that repository can even reach out to you to like to assign you particular task if you can work on this they will pay you money and you will get like similar status to gsoc and gsoc is not the only uh open source program that is there there are a lot of programs you can find like you can find it online there are repository which are which just list all these programs that are there there are there's there's by mozilla there's outreachy and there are different programs so just don't do gsoc just for the sake of gsoc but actually get interested in open source development uh before getting into open source development i would say like get familiar with cs fundamentals that's really important like get familiar yeah. with oop that's get familiar with uh at least the basic development get familiar with uh 
version control, like how to use Git and everything. Don't just start Python the first day, second day, do a Android uh, NG course and then directly start contributing to some particular like yeah. ML project, let's say yeah. TensorFlow or PyTorch or something like that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, you should be really strong in that in your field in computer science because those repositories are actually pretty good and those are maintained by like real engineers which have phds and are really qualified so you are going to like destroy their code quality and everything so just try to get your stuff familiarized with these things and then uh, what do we call contribute into this particular repository but try to build your own projects first if at least in the first year i would say try to build your own projects if you're at a really good level in your first year then you then definitely apply for GSOC. There's no harm at all. Like try to apply for different things that you can as much things. Okay. So the third question was kind of forced down upon me. So it's mainly key. Is it necessary to be good at competitive coding to clear uh, the coding, like coding interviews and coding rounds uh, at these big, big companies? Because I have a lot of people who are like exploring the other sides of computer science and not exactly into competitive coding. So, is it necessary to be a good competitive coder to back these companies? It's mixed misconception as well. Like CP is not related to like DSA or performing well in interviews. Uh, to perform well in an interview, you need to be really good in your communication and how do you explain stuff? But in competitive and your code quality to like separate it out in different functions and how do you do all these things? Those are also reported in interview and your general knowledge of computer science. Uh, just doing CP will not really help in developing what do we call DSA or like will help you like clear interviews because by being good in CP, you need to put a lot of time and mm. you can do like you can be really good in like interviews and all those things without putting in so much effort. Like it's just an overkill to just clear the interviews, like to do, do clear interviews, you just need to like work on lead code and DSA skills and some basic fundamentals, CS fundamentals, such as OOP, DVMS, and some test networks, like in placements, networks, operating systems, all those things you need to do uh, for your placements or internships point of view. Uh, but for, but for the sake of clearing interviews, like doing CP is not really important. You should do CP only if you're interested in problem solving or the art of like approaching different problems or how do you approach a algorithm problem or if you're interested in these kind of things. If you were ever like when you were small, when you were in ninth or 10th class or plus one plus two, if you're really interested into solving maths problems, like you, you wanted to like solve maths problem in your mind and you used to do that all day, then CP you will find really interesting and it's a really uh, good thing. That being said, there is also some benefits of doing CP. Uh, that is, you get to participate in a lot of competitions, uh, such as ICPC and Google Kickstart and uh, Facebook Hacker Cup. And if you get good ranks into those competitions, you get like invites by particular recruiters, or you can like mention those things in your resume, mm -hmm. which will also boost your uh, resume screening. All those things and yeah. like. It's really easy if you are, uh, what do we call? If you're a Google code gem, like a, what do we call it? In a top 20, 30, something like that, then obviously any Google recruiter will reach out to you for internship or placement. They will reach out to you. Uh, but to get into that level, it's a lot more effort than you actually require to get an internship. So. Okay, thanks Vaya for these wonderful insights. I hope you guys, my audience learned something. Uh, in the next part, we'll actually be talking about like get, going deep into the whole interview and interview process and the internship process of at, at Google and I hope like that will be the final video of this series.